Hello everyone and uh, welcome you tonight uh, to Ash News and uh, tonight we are proud to present our national international debate and uh, with us we got uh, two guys that will debate and I guess we'll try to find out who is uh, what shape of the world is who's right who's wrong heliocentric model uh, flat earth model and we will uh, just hear uh, waiting to hear what is truth what is not and uh, I guess uh, without further ado, I will just uh, represent uh, the two, uh, comp um, two uh, opponents or for tonight. We will uh, start with uh, Adam uh, Miken. Yeah. Good evening, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening, too. Yes. Hello. Hello, Michael. Hello. Sorry. Hello, Adam. Um, no. Welcome to Ash News. And uh, Adam, um, I'm well familiar with him uh, from a uh, few, mo few months ago. Uh, we met down in a convention in Amsterdam. And um, for this debate, I'm happy that he's joining us and uh, hoping that uh, you will do well. Uh, of course, tonight I'm uh, trying to be uh, as neutral as possible and uh, hoping uh, we'll have a successful de debate. And um, how are you feeling tonight, Adam? Yeah, very good. Yeah, it was. Uh... You're right, we uh, met in the foyer of the uh, public library in Amsterdam, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> quite a while back last year, when it's September time. So, yeah, it was a pleasure, mate. I remember you interviewed me with all your posh bits of kit. So, uh, yeah. But uh, regards to tonight, yeah, as you said, looking forward to a nice, uh, feeling polite feeling discussion. ready. Feeling ready? Ah, oh, more than ready. Ah, oh, right. Good, good. Okay, and with that uh, being said, uh, I will uh, put in the tune for uh, uh, the next uh, guy that will enter over here, uh, Mr. Michael Tune or MC Tune. Uh, how are you, Michael, tonight? I'm good. It's a good day here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, we're playing for you. Uh, we are the world, hoping it will uh, um, be sitting for your, uh, I know, uh, presentation today or uh, your uh, word of truth uh, from your side. And uh, I'm really hoping that uh, we'll have a fair and honest uh, debate because uh, we all uh, are just here for the plain, plain reason of uh, discovering the truth, uh, knowing what's right, what's wrong. And um, yeah, uh, we're not about egos over here, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good, good. Uh, so with that being said, um, the debate uh, will take place in the following way. First off, uh, you'll have uh, three minutes uh, to uh, present yourself. Uh, a little bit about your history, a little bit about your involvement with uh, um, either uh, uh, flat earth theory, uh, global eye, or either with uh, a heliocentric uh, model. And um, I want to uh, hear uh, what you are intending to uh, present over here in this uh, debate, which kind of like a view. Um, a little bit about yourself, and um, I think that uh, we will uh, start with, uh, with Michael on this one. I will uh, set, uh, set the time. And uh, Michael, uh, whenever you're ready, you can uh, start over. Yeah. Sure. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Nir and Adam. I'm looking forward to a good, uh, entertaining debate today. Um, I am a software engineer, uh, and I, I live in Minneapolis. And um, I have a YouTube channel, MC Tune, M C T O O N. Uh, and if you want, you can look at my website, mctune.net. Um, <clears throat> I I, uh, I have heard about the the idea of flat Earth for quite a while, but only uh, maybe three years ago got uh, more interested in it. I started out for quite a while on forums, just interacting with people on different forums, and um, found my way to YouTube. And uh, Flat Out Hero issued a hundred thousand dollar challenge to do some flight charts on maps, which I did um, twice, and. Um, that's how I started my channel. It's been uh, just fun since then. I do a debate every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central, or I try to, depending on other people's schedules. And um, that's about all I got for myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I saw that you got a, like, a YouTube channel that you have lots of debating. And uh, I saw... Um, uh, and what are you are intending to, uh, to present to us tonight uh, with your uh, questions and, and answers, uh, pretty much? Oh, well, yeah, um, uh, it seems to me that the Earth is a big sphere, mm -hmm. and um, uh, that's that's the main topic of my channel. I, I tend to avoid 
other things on uh, on my channel as it gets divisive and um, I don't know it can lead to less fun and I like to I like to enjoy what I do there and uh, so that's what I, I intended to show what I know about uh, the shape of the earth all right good good luck for you and uh, I guess uh, with one minute left uh, we will uh, uh, switch over to uh, mr. Adam Mikian over here and uh, in your time, you can start over, present yourself, and what you're going to do tonight. Okay. Um, yeah. Good evening. Um, so yeah, my name is Adam Meek, and I'm uh, um, I'm over in the, the UK in Nottingham. I'm uh, old man, 46. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm obviously a, a, I'm a husband, a father. Um, professionally, I'm a pharmacist. Um, and I work also uh, a little bit in, in terms of in academia as well. I uh, train and validate uh, the postgraduate people for for uh, for registration. So it's, it's called a pre pre registration tutor. So I'm involved in that, and I do a little bit of work with uh, the university as well with regards to the development of their undergraduate pharmacy program uh, international particularly in Malaysia and China <clears throat> um, so that's kind of me professionally in terms of why I'm in this this arena um, I kind of many years ago was in, in um, trying to into helping people into a bit of common law stuff supporting people um, and some of the people down there had this crazy idea that the earth was flat um, and knowing that I'm a bit of a geek kind of set me off with this challenge and uh, I think that's probably a similar tale to <laughs> many a flat earther we, we start out trying to debunk it so uh, with my uh, bit of maths bit of science knowledge and the likes I, I headed off to try and do so and in that process, mainly via Twitter, initially met up with the guys at Iron Realm about five years ago, and we formed the. Well, I I kind of joined shortly after the channel was formed. Um, met up with the guys there. And I've been pimping around YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube's flat earth scene kind of ever since. Um, that's kind of me. We we have a show. Uh, Iron Realm Media every every Friday evening, 10 o'clock UK time, called Have No Sphere. And some of the guys also. Uh, Half a minute, Adam. Oh, yeah, okay. I have a podcast um, on um, uh, and uh, uh, on radio show on True Frequency Radio, and that's called The Ironworks. And that's with uh, Iron Realm members Josh, Zach, and Walt. So that's kind of us in terms of the flat earth scene. And uh, I'm here to. Hopefully, have a good chat with a baller and uh, chew over some of the topics that um, are of interest to both of us. Okay, uh, we are just hearing now the siren. Okay, I don't know if you guys are hearing it, but no. uh, yeah, but uh, this is like the siren that will, uh, probably the audience will hear out uh, every time that you reach out uh, the zero point of uh, uh, the time over here. Uh, so, um, and of course I will give you a notice uh, with every question whenever you, uh, let's say a minute before the end of the question, I will uh, notify you it's uh, another minute. Um, and uh, regarding the questions, uh, oh, first of all about uh, behavior rules uh, during uh, this debate. Uh, it's very important, of course, to, uh, uh, to be civilized with each other, to be kind to one another. And uh, besides that, uh, when I'm asking the question to each one, uh, of course, don't interrupt to each other's uh, questions, uh, to, uh, to each other's answers, and uh, let them finish uh, the answer. At the end, we'll have uh, uh, a special time that we can react uh, on each other's <coughs> answers. So um, I believe uh, that you will have uh, enough time for that. But when I'm asking the questions, please try not to interrupt between uh, to one another. If there will be interruptions, there will be penalties, I guess, uh, that, I will, uh, that I will do over here. I'll think of, a, of a good ones. So, um, and the questions themselves are going to be uh, divided in the following way. Uh, first two questions are my questions, uh, which are kind of like similar, uh, actually pretty much of identical questions uh, uh, for the two uh, opponents. And uh, 
uh, it's going to be about uh, subjects uh, um, that uh, I told the participants, uh, uh, the, the opponents uh, already before the broadcast. And uh, the third question will be a different question uh, to each uh, opponent uh, regarding uh, his type of, uh, of belief or uh, knowledge um, with, uh, with me trying uh, pretty much to disprove uh, uh, the, one, the, the model that they hold. And uh, the fourth and the fifth question were going to be uh, the qu questions of the opponents for one another. Uh, to Adam will have two questions for Michael and Michael will have two questions for Adam. Uh, and as I told you at the end, they will have time to uh, uh, reply and uh, to question each other's answers uh, uh, following, the, um, following the debate. So uh, you can write uh, notes uh, throughout the debate and uh, following them back afterwards uh, when we finish. Uh, seems fair, guys? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds good. Adam, yeah, good. Yeah, more than happy, mate. All right, good. So uh, without further ado, we will start with uh, the question. And uh, wishing you all a happy debate and uh, good luck again. Um, okay, so first question. <clears throat> As I told you, it's a similar question and uh, we will begin uh, with uh, Michael. The topic is uh, creation. Uh, Michael, please describe the manner in which, in your opinion, the process of creation of the universe has occurred. Please state years, distances and velocities of celestial bodies in space as well as any scientific experiments or observations that have been made to substitute to substitient your claim. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, so the um, one thing that's pretty common is people look to to the Bible um, and I have no problem with that. Um, but there are uh, when you look at that, there kind of tends to be two different groupings that people fall into for how they interpret the Bible. Um, Several uh, take a literal and descriptive seven-day uh, period, and uh, another group says uh, it's poetic and it's not specific. Um, since it's an opinion and an interpretation, nobody gets to really claim that theirs is the only true one, um, especially when we're talking about science. So I look to outside of that, and, and uh, if there's something that confirms one or the other, then that tends to... Uh, lead lead me toward which one or the other might be a better interpretation. Um, so, and it, the other thing is, this isn't this isn't my particular area of expertise. So my opinions on this are weakly held. Um, I don't have. Um, uh, if somebody comes with some other uh, information, I'm I'm fine to look at it and and uh, happy to 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 accept new information especially because I, I don't I don't have a real depth in in uh, in the ancient history of the universe but uh, the stuff I do know that, that um, the Big Bang theory does predict things like um, light traveling to us with a redshift which has been experimentally uh, observed and also more importantly the um, cosmic microwave background radiation was uh, predicted by the Big Bang Theory and has been observed. Now, are there other things that could uh, could cause that? There certainly could, but um, I'm I'm fine with 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 so far that kind of stuff. And but like I said, if there's new information, I'm happy to uh, to take a look at it. So as far as years, one minute. Um, it it says uh, that the the current best hypothesis is 14 billion years. I I don't know. I'm happy with that or anything else. If you want to go with a uh, short term, 7,000 years or something, um, I don't find any difference between that and last Thursdayism, which says the universe started existing last Thursday and everything in our that's our memories was just put in place. Um, so either is fine by me, and um, that's all I have for that. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, yep. Okay, and uh, we'll move on uh, with uh, the same question uh, to, to Adam. I'll uh, read it again. Um, just a second. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Adam, describe the manner in which, in your opinion, the process of creation of the universe has occurred. Please state years, distances, and velocities, as well as any scientific experiments or observation that you have been made to substanti substantiate your claim. I find it hard with this word, substantiate. Anyway, Michael, uh, Adam, you can start. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I think I probably agree with Toon. Um, you know, we can, a lot of us draw for interpretation and understanding on religious text. Um, for me, like Toon, it's it's not something that I use as as any form of divination in my understanding of this of creation. So I'll probably briefly just mention two topics that, for me. Um, suggest creation. They're both scientific, um, fundamentally quantum mechanics and genetics. Um, so I kind of draw on these as, as why I think uh, we live in a creation. Um, I'm not going to talk about stars and uh, interpretation of, of data, which is not of causality, but just to have a little look at modern science and how we interpret it. So, and I'll, I'll try and obviously with, with time limits, I'll keep it brief. So, in terms of quantum mechanics, um, <laughs> for me, quantum mechanics starts to demonstrate uh, with our greater understanding that we don't live in this simple atomistic world that was fundally, fundamentally portrayed to us from from a Big Bang theory. Um, and I suppose at the most base level, the way I'd describe uh, how. I would use quantum mechanics for that is to state that you know the, the knowledge of the information um, with regards to which path mechanism with regards to the quantum eraser experiments um, actually collapses the wave function something that fascinates modern science but something that actually says that knowledge information is key to the structure uh, and how reality uh, manifests itself um, and I'll leave that one there because quantum mechanics is a bag of worms. <laughs> um, the the second thing I'd yeah, use one is, minute. is okay, quick, is DNA. And, and and like I said, a lot of evolutionists will try and use DNA as as, as something. And a, a quick example is is for me, DNA isn't about the proteins. It's not a consequence of a structure of proteins. Is how evolution would put it. It's it's what's contained. What's what's the hidden language. Within those protein, uh, within those proteins. So, for example, we can we could write a, a message on a computer or with pen and paper, and this, the message would be the same because the, the it's, it's the knowledge behind it, the under, underwritten, embedded code that is the greatest exemplifier that can't come from random acts of of, Eight, of uh, seven, agglomeration of particles. Six. It has to have an underwritten uh, creator. Um, that, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Adam. Pleasure. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so we'll be going on for the next for the next question. Sec uh, second question, and the topic for this one will be the sun. Uh, Adam, you will start answering uh, mm -hmm. this uh, this question. Uh, just a second. I will after this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, Adam, can you explain what? what the, uh, the size of the sun is, in your opinion, what is the composition of the materials from which it consists, what is, what is its distance from Earth, whether it is moving, and what is the speed? Adam, you can start. Yep. No worries. Um, um, I think, first of all, size, speeds, etc., etc., what we have to realize is that all we have is angular sides sizes and angular speeds um, all of the and, and that leads basically to give us a proportionality from observation which is, is how things work now um, fundamentally the way in which we pin some numbers to this is is assumption based and that's based on the transit of Venus um, where the assumption was that Venus is the same size of Earth and therefore all the calculations uh, are, are worked from that and guess what modern science proves that well that random guess that Venus was the same size as Earth turned out to be true so how lucky did he guess correctly so I think I'd leave that there in terms of all of those we, we can certainly define proportionality with regards to the observational data that we have but anything else nobody's took a tape measure out there um, in terms of composition I think what's important again is to is to look at modern science and how it would define it because that's the best we've got. Um, and in that, it's 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 important to differentiate between real spectroscopy, 
and the standards that it upholds and our celestial spectroscopy and what we're doing here to define the composition of these, in the case of the sun, 93 million miles away, apparently. Um, so what, 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 what they use is what's called an emission spectra. Um, now, most fundamentally, there is a number of contradictions with modern science. Most fundamentally is a gas can only emit a, emit a partial spectra. Sunlight is emit and gives a full spectra. Um, a gas, uh, outside of being a ball of gas in uh, space, which, which is a misnomer, how does it hold itself together? But say fundamentally, the sunlight we receive is a full emission spectra. Gas is only emit partial spectra. Now, the assumption in which the way the composition of the sun is is made up is based on, like I said, celestial spectroscopy. And there's a, a gap, basically, in, in the full spectra, and that corresponds to hydrogen and helium. The assumption is that this gap is caused by a uh, slow-moving set of the compository gases which encompass the uh, sun, and it's those that interfere, which are those primarily hydrogen and helium. Um, now, reality is, and even in modern science, we admit that hydrogen and helium could be anywhere uh, between the observer and the sun. And what I would say, modern science does confirm that the top layer of the atmosphere consists mainly of hydrogen and helium. And we do not exclude this zone Eight, in our analysis. Okay, I'm finished. All right, good. Uh, just before the siren. Yeah, <laughs> good. Uh, I just like hearing the siren. It's, uh, it's amazing. You'll see it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, good. So we'll get to the, to the second question uh, for Michael. Um, uh, do you want me to repeat the question, Michael? No, it's the same question. That's good. I yeah. can uh, mm -hmm. go right uh, into it. Yes. You can start. Okay, so um, I have a few different studies that I put on my website at mctune.net slash sun, S-U-N. Uh, and I'd like to first refer to one called Radar, Radar Echoes from the Sun, where they took a large uh, antenna and they actually sent, uh, this is in 1959, they, uh, they transmitted radar in a particular pattern of uh, long and short pulses um, for... Uh, 900 seconds, I think, just just under the thousand seconds, I believe, that is the uh, the, the distance predicted by uh, 93 million miles, the amount of time it would take, um, and they received back radar bounces, um, and so this confirms two things: first, that it is a physical object, and second, that it is approximately the distance that they were uh, looking at, uh, that is otherwise been measured. Right, so that's one. It's a physical object. Um, second, and like like you said, um, Adam, that they they've used both the transit of Venus and Mercury, as well as uh, the angles from the Sun and the angles from Mars, to to get its distance. So all these different um, different methods to to measure the distance are in good alignment with each other. They they uh, they match well, and all of the um, more recent measurements uh, refine that number and uh, uh, shrink the margin of error. So there is a, uh, a study on my website there called the Astronomical Unit Determined by Radar Reflections from Venus. Now that doesn't necessarily require Venus to be the same size. It's about um, the distances. So and then for the composition, um, uh, yep, there, there are, uh, when you're looking at spectroscopy or Fraunhofer lines, you do see uh, primarily it's hydrogen and helium. They do also uh, have minute. measured they measured carbon, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, potassium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, and others, uh, uh, several others by using these these lines. Now those lines um, for these these elements, we do not have, for example, a large amount of magnesium or tin or vandium in our upper atmosphere. So. Um, there is an un unknown thing that would cause uh, between here and there these different Fraunhofer lines to um, to be absorbed uh, when you're looking at just our atmosphere and what's in between us and the sun. And there you go. All right. Thank you very much. We've 30 seconds left. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. And uh, with that being said, uh, we will uh, get on to the next part of uh, this debate. And uh, it will be... Uh, a different question to each uh, opponent and um, 
Uh, we will uh, start with uh, with you, Michael, on this one. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of a, a little bit of a long question, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the, the topic for for both of you guys uh, for the third question is uh, visual proofs. Uh, Michael, early last month, December fifth, the SpaceX spacecraft CRS nineteen mission takeoff was aired live. When the spacecraft reached the altitude of 162 kilometers, a rat was observed walking on the engine while the spacecraft was traveling at 10,879 uh, 10, kilometers per hour. These kinds of visuals, uh, which in my opinion are at uh, the very least unreasonable, are commonly revealed to us by footage from space and strongly suggest that the moon landing footage from 1969 was filmed in a television studio. Can you uh, scientifically explain these images and what is your opinion of them? Uh, yeah, so that, uh, that rat is yeah. not a rat. Um, so if you look, there's, there's um, the, it's, it looks like it's a, um, like that plastic uh, silver blanket that you you'd wear you give to like uh, victims of, of uh, disasters to keep warm um, they have that coating over over the the body of the the mechanism of the the the, the rocket engine and on one side you can see uh, that it's it's intact and on the other side you can see it's torn so that looks like a uh, it's a shredded piece of that that just got caught up in the uh, the cowl around the the rocket engine and it's moving around there now if it were a rat it would um, have been blown off or something and and uh, the movement of it is is slight because there isn't very much air so it, it doesn't move a whole lot it eventually falls off but it's pretty clear what that is and I think see, seeing that it's a rat is just seeing what you want to see or what we say pareidolia <laughs> Yeah, and uh, regarding uh, the move, uh, the the moon landing uh, footage, uh, have you seen anything uh, which is uh, commonly been uh, been claimed by uh, flat earthers uh, as uh, as fake footage, as uh, fake images? Uh, can you uh, elaborate on that one? Yeah, I've seen I've seen quite a few. Like for example, um, one where. Either Buzz or Neil is coming down the ladder, and you see the Earth in the background. Um, that picture has actually been uh, fabricated by somebody, maybe trying to to cast doubt on on the moon landings, uh, because that actual picture of the Earth is from Apollo 8, the what they call the Earthrise picture. It's not from Apollo 11, and uh, when you look at there, there's no image of that on NASA's website. The only image we have. Is, is from third parties and when you when you look at it you can see the um, the JPEG artifacts around the moon um, plus being that it's from Apollo 8 it's a pretty obvious uh, fake mm -hmm. um, others I've seen um, um, half a minute left yeah yeah oh well uh, oh the flag the flag uh, waving is a pretty pretty common one um, uh, and if it were in air, it wouldn't wave because if it were in a, you know, it would stop waving because of air, uh, not continue waving. So the fact that it actually continues waving tells us that it's it's in a very low pressure um, area. All right. So thank you very yeah. much. Um, I will have to be honest. I asked uh, in my previous debate. I asked the same question, uh, Nouriel. Uh, um, he pretty much answered uh, the same things. Uh, kind of like uh, it was a little, a little bit more expanded, but yeah, he pretty, pretty much uh, answered the, the same uh, the same things. <laughs> All right, uh, Adam. Um, <clears throat> uh, for your question, the sun mm -hmm. the sun setting uh, over the horizon is to many visual proof of uh, planets uh, of planet Earth's rotation. Can the sunset be explained using the flat Earth model as well? You can start. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm aware how the movement of lights in the sky is suppositionally used to to validate things. Um, 
And this is, of course, in most cases, it's, a, it's, it's backwards because the lights in the sky were moving before the invention of the ball. So I think fundamentally any matching patterns, you know, you're not going to build a model when you've already got the observations and not have the model match the observations. So I think fundamentally statements that say, oh, well, it matches, don't actually prove anything. Um, they're just a correlation. Um, but what they do do is pin the ball model to certain things which um, have to be adhered to, which is useful you know, in, in other analysis, these, these predefined things that if we're going to attribute this rotation to um, uh, this movement that we see in the sky to the rotation of us underneath, then that has consequences. So I have no problem with it, but I mean, fundamentally, it's, it, there's nothing scientific about it, is, is what I would kind of say. So in terms of flat Earth, um, and the term model, then no, we don't have a flat Earth model. You know, we're, we're just embarking on this, this journey and to try and pin a model with the research and funding we ha have is, is, a, is a, a silly thing. What we do have is an understanding of perspective. And we're, understanding, and we're developing understandings of, of how the atmosphere works and effects in the atmosphere. Um, but for me, um, is it an is it something like the ballers use a fundamental underpinning uh, of the the concept? No, um, it's just an ob they are at the moment certainly from a scientific point of view just lights in the sky. And forty minutes, mm -hmm. yeah, forty seconds. Sorry. I was going to say I could go, I can't go that long. Um, and so for me, uh, any inference that you would try to draw to them with regards to in a ball position the, the shape of the earth or for a, a globe you know a flat earther's position the nature of what the earth is then i think it's 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 foolhardy because at best you're only ever going to get something that matches your model you're never going to get anything scientific that you could state it as all right thank you adam uh, all right, and uh, that uh, concludes our uh, final uh, third stage of uh, this debate. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the fourth and the fifth uh, questions are going to be presented by uh, you guys to one another. Uh, we will uh, begin with uh, Michael's questions uh, to Adam. Okay, so uh, whenever you you feel you ready, Michael, you can uh, ask your first question through to Adam. Okay, uh, so the, there's some numbers, the, the, the specifics of the numbers aren't critically important, but if you want to look at them, they're on my website at mctune.net slash ashnews, that's E-S-H-N-E-W-S, -E no space or dash or anything. So uh, here it goes. Gravimeters are precise accelerometers with 9 to 12 digits of precision. They use a sealed evacuated temperature controlled chamber to house the measurement device. They can be rented by anyone wishing to test for themselves. So the measured downward acceleration in Fairbanks, Alaska is 9.821981599 meters per second squared. And in Kauai, Hawaii, it's 9.787881888 meters per second squared. The law of gravitational attraction, which is F equals G times M1, M2 all over R squared, and Earth's centrifugal acceleration accurately predicts these values to less than Two point, uh, 0.25% error. This is independent of the gravity of the density of the object. So what non-mass to mass attraction explanation has been confirmed experimentally or empirically to supplant the law of gravitational attraction with the same predictive accuracy? All right. uh, Adam, can I, have you understood the question? The question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so you can start. First, so the first question is which, which which gravity, Newtonian or Einsteinian? Um, I'm just speaking about this measured downward acceleration. Yeah, so you're implying this acceleration is is it is it affected by a uh, mysterious force uh, which is created by mass attracting mass, as in a Newtonian sense, 
or is it created by the bending of space time and is not a force okay so um i'm sorry my question is at the end is what has been con uh confirmed experimentally or empirically to supplant the law of gravitation uh with the same predictive accuracy so it's not about the law of gravitational attraction it is what is your explanation for this well, downward acceleration? Well, yeah, primarily. So my first point is we're, we're, we're analysing the, the device. You're saying uh, gravimeter. So that implies, first of all, that it's, it's analysing gravity. But unfortunately, I think even in your introduction to it, you actually correctly define what it is. Um, and that's an acceleration measuring device. Um, and what happens is we then pre-assume and apply this gravity term to it. It's not measuring gravity, is it? It's measuring acceleration. Right, uh, this is uh, your final answer, Adam? Well, yeah, the, the, a, gravi, a gravimeter is not a gravimeter. Mm -hmm. in, in its own definition, it, it, like I said, it, it measures acceleration fields. Um, which I think in, in wiki uh, they say something like it's uh, which which can sometimes be referred to as gravity fields well it's not so we're being scientific here so let's let's d discuss what we're measuring and let's not exceed the boundaries of what we can apply the meaning to and certainly if we're going to apply it to something this is where my first point was are we applying it to as being able to measure the bending of a conceptual medium, i.e. space-time, or are we applying it as that we're measuring uh, the, uh, a mystical force where, where mass attracts mass? And I think if you're going to evaluate a device, understanding what it's measuring is, is crucial. Yeah, so the measurement is a downward acceleration. And if you are not accepting mass ex, uh, attracting mass, my question then is, what is it that is the cause, in your opinion, and that has been empirically and experimentally verified, of this downward acceleration? So it's not about gravity. It's about not gravity. What is your not gravity explanation for this? Well, I don't need a just-so story, do I, to point out that your just-so story that the reason there's a variance in acceleration has nothing to do with you renaming the device a gravity meter. That doesn't mean you're measuring gravity. It doesn't mean you can apply it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not assuming that. I'm. I'm asking for your explanation for it. Well, I said I don't provide a just so a, an alternative just so story. That would be non-scientific. What we can do. Well, you, scientifically you can, you can construct a, right. a hypothesis. What, I mean, <clears throat> All right. I, I, th I think, Michael, that, uh, that Adam's answer was uh, pretty much uh, clear uh, for uh, uh, what he thinks. Uh, I think that uh, we can move on to the next question. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Michael, you can pr uh, present your, uh, your second question. Oh, all right. Okay. Is Michael going yeah. again? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going again, then, and then you're going to present your two questions. Okay. All right. No worries. Okay. So, um, and I'll put this also on uh, on my website here. So, on the same site, if you want to read it along or refer to it, um, when when measuring uh, when measured using a proper solar filter, the sun's angular size varies from three and a half arc minutes to three or thir sorry. 31.5 arc minutes to 32.5 arc minutes everywhere on Earth over the course of a year. This matches the measured distance to the Sun, as I previously referenced, and the ellipticity of the Earth's orbit. If the Sun is not this measured distance in size, how is its narrowly ranging angular size explained? All right, Adam, you can start. Yeah, I think I'd probably concisely refer you to what I said earlier um, only a fool would try and purport a model that didn't match observation so of course it matches the observations were first the model second to try and claim that the, ob the, the, 
that your numbers match when you built your numbers from the observations and that your numbers match the observations is is is, is false, isn't it? So uh, it's, I'm it's, sorry, it's you're, just you're stating, still. It's oh, sorry, Michael, don't, uh, don't interrupt. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's a statement of the obvious. Of course, it matches. I would not expect the ball model to not match. Why? Why would that be a validation? Where, where would the initial numbers have come from from observation and then yeah that's why we have to have a bit of tilt we have to have a bit of this to explain how in the model their model it it has to be to match the observations so i don't see any validity uh, within stating that the numbers match all right uh, that's yeah. the end of the uh, answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good, yeah. good. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, and uh, we got plenty of time left, but I guess uh, we will use it uh, to switch sides. And uh, Adam, uh, you can uh, start presenting uh, your question uh, to Adam, uh, to to Michael. And uh, yeah, go for it. First one. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean. It wasn't really, it was a, a more general question, because uh, I knew I'd be coming to talk to somebody from, from the ball side, so it wasn't so much to have a, uh, the, the first one, a challenge. It was more to understand a, a concept that's kind of going off in uh, debates and that, which, which seems to be a, a position that's f fallen back to. And um, So the question is, is why do... Uh, a lot of, and I won't lump everybody in because not everybody has the same opinion. But why do a lot of ball earth proponents say that science doesn't prove anything? Um, it's as simple as that. The question, then, um, I, I think, because uh, I would include yourself in that, you've made that statement. So that's kind of why I wanted to ask that question. So it's not much of a, a challenge. It's it's really a an asking of an explanation for a theology. When did uh, Michael uh, present uh, this uh, statement, Michael, uh, Adam? Um, well, I, and the quote I've got is on uh, Jose J.G. Gonzalez's show, mm. uh, whilst debating Anthony Riley. Um, uh, Toon says, I'm sorry, that's a little bit of word games. I will not accept science proves things, because scientists will stand up all day long and say, no, I'm sorry, we don't prove things. Um, all right, uh, Michael, uh, you can uh, reply in, uh, uh, in your own time. Yes, uh, so uh, I say that science doesn't prove things because that is what scientists say. Um, it, uh, it is something that you can't do in the physical realm. You can prove things mathematically, for example. There are math proofs, but there are not scientific proofs. The way the scientific uh, process works is, is you test things. You, you, uh, produce a hypothesis and and the hypothesis doesn't prove anything it typically it fails to disprove something and uh, and by doing that it gives supporting evidence to what it is that that you're looking uh, to explore right so when you have a large number of, of tests that you've done and experiments that you've done that have produced supporting evidence in something then you you start to gain, confidence in the accuracy of it and at that point then it's called a scientific theory a theory is not a hunch it's not a guess a theory is a concise description of of many things that together um, work and I have a predictive model uh, you can use it to make predictions so uh, and and that's that's kind of opposite the common parlance word for theory where people often use it uh, in place of hypothesis where they mean a, a guess or a hunch or or something, so uh, nowhere in in the you know the the scientific literature do you, or philosophy of science do you find people saying that science proves things, and I'd refer to um, a very nice uh, uh, website written by uh, the University of Berkeley. If you just search for uh, Berkeley, what is science or Berkeley understanding science, you'll find it. Uh, and they, they specifically go and talk about whether or not science proves things. And they say, no, we don't, we don't prove things. We can sort of disprove things. Um, uh, One minute. But even that, 
even that isn't its uh, science s strength. It finds evidences for things, and when you have lots of evidence, then you have a high level of confidence. All right. Uh, thank you for your answer, Michael. And uh, we will uh, go forward to uh, the next question of Adam, which will actually be the final question of, uh, of this debate. Uh, go ahead, uh, Adam. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, nice simple one uh, to, to, to finish one. Um, a flat earther's favorite, I suppose, for you. So <laughs> how do you have gas pressure without a container? Oh, that's easy. Gravity. So uh, the second law of thermo thermodynamics is not uh, does not state anywhere that there is a container. Uh, in fact, it talks about the distribution of energy, and we know uh, through E equals mc squared that energy and mass are interchangeable. Uh, so it's a distribution of mass and enter energy. So what will happen is it, it seeks its lowest entropy form. Uh, so if there's a force pulling things together, it will, it will um, coalesce into a sphere. If there is no force in, involved, then things will distribute evenly throughout the, the, the area. So if the Earth did not have a downward acceleration, then, then we would expect to see, a, according to the second law of thermodynamics, a uniform distribution of air pressure throughout the atmosphere. But we don't. We see a decreasing pressure with elevation. You can see that driving, driving up a hill, you can have a, a, and feeling your ears pop, you can put a balloon on top of a bottle uh, doing that. Or you can watch the most recent video from Dwayne Kellum, uh, who had a barometer on, on his 120,000 foot uh, balloon. Now he is, to my understanding, a flat earther. Um, so uh, the, uh, the, the Dwayne Kellum, I see stars number 24 would be his, his uh, video that has the barometer. So we see a differential in the pressure and the second law of thermodynamics states that if there is no force causing a, uh, uh, a differential, um, then we would, ex we would expect to see an even distribution, but we don't. So the question is, what is the cause of this disequilibrium? And I say gravity. Uh, and nobody else has presented any other explanation that I've seen yet for that force causing the disequilibrium. I've seen people say it's a dynamic system, but uh, but never <laughs> never an explanation for that dynamic system because when we have a differential of pressure that great, we see um, we see huge huge fast rushes of of air switching places to equalize it out and we don't see that in the atmosphere it's very calm at the top of a mountain at times and instead of uh, having a great rushing of, of air coming up to meet it so I think the, the second law of thermodynamics definitely points to gravity all right thank you very much Michael and uh, thank you very much both of you guys uh, it's been a lovely debate and uh, good serious questions and uh, Happy to hold it. Uh, so, uh, for the final part uh, of uh, this uh, this debate, I will let you uh, go back a little bit uh, for your uh, opponent's uh, answers and uh, see if uh, you want to remark uh, something uh, something about it. Um, Adam, uh, let's uh, let's start with you. Uh, have you got uh, something that you want to to reply to any of uh, um, Michael's answers? Um, <clears throat> I think. I'd probably stay away from the, the, the topics directly. So it, as, as a, a more summative mm -hmm. thing, what I've, what I've kind of noticed is um, certainly from a, a validation point of view to, to take our standpoints, it's, it's interesting that we have a lot of um, probability correlations that, that validate the, the ball earth, things that we as flat earthers, you know, took us red when we were on the other side uh, and on this journey we, we've investigated and uh, they turned out to be, like I say, a lot of it tends to be not the science that it was first painted to us as. But what I would say in, in terms of the gas pressure, um, gravity meters, a, a, lot of, a lot of the things we've discussed is, certainly from my point of view, the 
the validation from my from my standpoint is is the opposition that science uh, that validated science has with some of the claims for the Paul Earth model. That's the underpinning thing for me is my knowledge and trust in science um, as it does prove things for you know as scientists do prove and there are, there are numerous citations but I won't go too few but what I will just say to you is you know science has proved that water boils at 100 degrees at sea level at one atmosphere of pressure um, information is only caused by intelligent agents combustion is a result of oxidation reactions Lack of vitamin C intake in humans results in scurvy. Knowledge in, with regards to quantum mechanics of the existence of the witch path information collapses the wave function. Uh, the rapid motion of collision of molecules with the walls of a container causes gas pressure. It's the necessary antecedent. Uh, magnetism is caused by the motion of electric charge. These are all things that science have proved. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay, uh, Michael, maybe you want to refer to more specific uh, questions um, or answers that uh, that Adam had uh, throughout the debate. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, of course, I. The two questions I asked, I asked knowing that there is no flat Earth answer for it, and I do appreciate Adam's complete deflection on that, um, admitting that flat Earth has no answer for those things. Um, Specifically, then, uh, the list you just gave of things science has proven. The first one is the exception to the rule water, uh, water boils at 100 degrees is actually the definition of 100 degrees, so it's not proven, it's the other way around. The rest of them are all theories that are well supported with facts. And uh, science would, scientists and, and uh, the, the scientific process would say any one of those could potentially be upset with the introduction of new information. But because they are so well explored, it's very unlikely and we have a high level of confidence in those things. Um, <clears throat> so um, the the one thing you, you said, uh, you don't have a model, and then you kind of said, kind of hinted that uh, it's, it's not scientific. Of course, scientific uh, and having a model are one and the same. You, um, you make an observation, and as part of that observation, you build a model. You may not specifically think about building a model, but that's what you're doing, because then you use that model to construct your hypothesis. So when you say the Earth is flat, you now have a model. It may not be well-developed, but you have a model, and there's, there's ramifications from that. Uh, so when you have a model, which you do, then what you want to do is find... find um, explanations for all observations and fit them into that same model and you, so you can have hopefully one model that explains everything uh, we have that with the globe we can predict the uh, sunrise azimuth we can predict the um, the downward acceleration we can predict the the uh, angular size of the sun and the moon all these using the same model and you have unfortunately nothing and I understand that because there is really not any evidence for flat earth so it's difficult you're in a tough spot so i appreciate that um that's uh that's all i have on that all right uh i want to uh, surprise you guys with uh, another uh, surprising question uh, if if you will to to answer okay uh okay. it will be a question for for one another but i want um and i want you to think uh, of a question uh, which will not be from the scientific field, but uh, uh, from what I understood uh, from both of you guys, uh, uh, you, Michael, you are uh, well uh, experienced with uh, debating uh, flat earthers, and uh, uh, Adam, you are well experienced with uh, uh, debating uh, globies, uh, whatever. Um, Michael, um, I saw even in your YouTube channel you have. Uh, uh, you have a, an analysis of a flat earther uh, that you made, uh, uh, something like that with another guy, I saw one of your movies. Um, I want to, to ask you guys if you got kind of like a personal question to one another, something which is not related to, to science about uh, the character of, uh, of, of, the other, of the other person, okay? If, if you are, it's kind of like a, it's not related to, to the actual debate, okay? It's more like a personal question if you are interested to know for yourselves. Uh, so let's uh, 
Uh, let's begin with Adam. Do you have any question uh, for Michael on that one? <laughs> or just I didn't. You didn't. Are you are you saying can I quickly try and think of one? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps perhaps Michael will uh, will start. Do you, do you have any oh, uh, prepared question that you always know, wanted to ask a flat earther? <laughs> I was glad you were asking him first. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I've uh, as you as you mentioned, I've I've had quite a few debates on my channel, and mm -hmm. and I've had. I've had some that are dumpster fires, and I've had uh, mostly that are, have been pretty, pretty polite, and uh, so I've appreciated that. Um, and Adam, it's it's been a, a great conversation, so thank you. Um, what questions? So um, I do see uh, it, it's it's notable that that you're a pharmacist. Um, it, it, you know, there's the impression that flat earthers tend to be uneducated and I know that's not true especially spending my time on on the, the online forums um, uh, I don't know what what uh, what was your your education in uh, becoming a pharmacist well, obviously it's um, as you guys do it college university etc um, and then you obviously have a year's training um, qualification, see if you fit to practice then more exams. So it's a bit like a, a doctor. It's the same. It's the same in the states. Um, the international programs are, are all pretty much the same. Most medical things are along those lines. So you you do that, and then obviously I progressed uh, uh, oh, 15 years ago. So uh, um, involved with the big multinationals, Walmart and and the likes you you'd know, and um, involved a bit more in teaching at the university. Uh, in them days, but now I'm, uh, I've got my own shops, and I'm what's called a superintendent pharmacist. It's just it's, it's a posh title, tune, but um, it basically means I'm legally responsible for other people's mistakes. Um, <laughs> no, that's tough, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's the ethical, you know, the management and the operation of of, of the pharmacy. So I, I kind of sit there doing that sort of stuff, and like I said, work now more advising on the the training of pharmacists and how we develop them. So it gives me a very good, pharmacists are better than doctors. Yeah, we, we, we don't just do bodies. <laughs> we do aerosols, we do, a, you know, a, a, a compounding, all sorts of additional sciences is part of the, you know, the program. So um, I'm kind of involved, oh, a winding down, but yeah, <laughs> kind of involved with that. So yeah, it does, like I say, I, I think there's a, with with either side a preconception to try and define somebody is is daft and i think all i'd say i, I don't have any direct questions but it's been a pleasure chatting to you in a mm -hmm. in a civilized manner something i don't often do this uh to <laughs> because generally you know i, I referred to jose to it. this kind of uh uh civility is is very little afforded else out there you know in youtube land so it's been it's been a pleasure tonight i've enjoyed the chat and I hope likewise for yourself, sir. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so no question uh, from, from Adam's side. Uh, anyways, uh, so I guess I will conclude uh, this debate. Uh, first of all, thank you personally from uh, for myself, letting an Israeli guy, uh, you know, uh, concluding the debate between, uh, between the British and an American. It's very... Uh, Weird position, uh, uh, and I'm yeah, glad. Uh, uh, I, I see the irony of an Israeli leading. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is ironic, right? And uh, I'm happy that I could be in this ironic place. Uh, and I uh, thank you guys uh, for uh, for helping me to do so. Uh, Michael, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I will gladly uh, try to uh, to host you with uh, more debates uh, as we goes on uh, with H News over here. Uh, it's always like a nice uh, content for uh, for our channel, and uh, um, and you're most welcome, uh, of course. I don't know if you felt in your home court, let's say it like that, but uh, uh, but I think that uh, you, as long as the debate uh, went on, you felt uh, pretty much comfortable. Um, and uh, Adam, yeah. and Adam, uh, of course, uh, we will con uh, continue to be uh, to be in contact and. Uh, and uh, to debate, uh, not to debate, to discuss, I guess, this is what uh, we do about uh, our uh, little uh, crazy theories that we all uh, um, most love. And um, uh, besides that, I want to uh, thank all our viewers over here and, uh, 
Um, also, don't forget uh, to subscribe to Ash News. We will highly appreciate that. Uh, and uh, with that being said, uh, thank you guys again for the debate. Thanks to our viewers. Uh, have a good night, and uh, we'll see you again on Ash News.